Back on Inside Tennessee with the director of ORNL, Dr. Thomas Zachariah, Don Bosch. Dr. Zachariah, uh, it's always a treat to have you here on the show. Uh, usually we get politicians that are uh, uh, no smarter than Susan and I, so it's uh, delightful <laughs> to have someone uh, clearly brighter than us. But uh, we are a political show, and so there is a political question I'd like to ask. With the sort of rise of the anti-science movement that unfortunately we've seen over the last years, uh, we, you know, the, the, everything from the COVID deniers to the climate change deniers. I know those are areas that the lab has been very, very uh, integral in, in researching and working and finding solutions. I'm curious, though, we talked before the show, your budget has gone from $1.6 to $2.4 million over the last four years. You've million. added 1,000 jobs. Uh, I'm sorry, a million. That's right. A uh, million. How, the, billion, I'm sorry. Uh, we'll get a billion. Yeah, it's, it's sort of like the old Austin Powers movies. Uh, <laughs> but I'm, I'm curious to how you've managed uh, to do this in sort of a time where uh, it's, it's been difficult, uh, I suppose, to see the sciences supported. Well, actually, uh, uh, I think that uh, contrary to, to you know, the, the general discourse, the public discourse, uh, the support for science, in particular the support for the physical science, the Department of Energy stewards for the nation has been very strong. And, and over the last four years, from 2016 to 2020, in, 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 in part, because of our elected representatives' strong support, uh, Senator Alexander, Congressman Fleischman, and uh, in, in appropriations, uh, the DOE science, officer science budget has seen about a 36% increase over the last four years. We are a large, broad science laboratory. In fact, we are the broadest portfolio of all DOE officer science laboratory. And so as the budgets grew, because of the talented people that we have, the facilities that DOE has invested here, and the program that we have, the laboratory has also seen a similar growth, perhaps a little bit better because again, that our, our staff and our ideas uh, have carried the day. And, and I will tell you, uh, uh, we, uh, we are very well positioned to support uh, scientifically the innovation agenda of the nation, and this predated the current administration. Uh, and, and and I think that um, that the, the the fact that we continue to attract talented people to East Tennessee to support that agenda is really um, exciting and invigorating for the for for me as a as a leader of this institution. Dr. Zachariah, we said uh, we see hundreds of million dollars invested in the lab and its research and people. When critics say, well, what do we get for that investment? Uh, is it fair to look at it almost as we would a venture capital firm where you have 10 projects going and if two of them are successful, that is a win. You may have eight whiffs, but uh, you're really looking in, into the future and trying to predict things and science is just about going step by step by step to see if something pans out. Is that a fair way to look at it? It is, it is uh, to some extent. And so let me just say the, the scientific enterprise uh, in the United States, which has really been the bedrock of our economic superiority for a, a, you know multiple decades, uh, has been uh, essential and has a number of components. The sort of the very basic fundamental research that is done, um, you know, sort of, uh, Questions about you know the origins of the universe that uh, some of you know some of the work carried out at the university as well as some of the basic science laboratory use inspired research that we do at the laboratory in terms of basic energy sciences and then taking it all the way to translation sciences. So how we impact um, the impact the return of investment is manifold. Obviously, the innovation is translated by working with industry. And, and they license our technology and it goes on to become new businesses. But we also work in partnership with industry to drive uh, innovation in industry. I'll give you a quick example. It was in 2009 when, um, you know, Jensen Huang, who was a founder, CEO, and chairman of NVIDIA, he came to Knoxville. In fact, we, we had dinner 
uh, here in Knoxville. Um, and over a dinner, we decided to re-engineer uh, his processor. So when he came to visit with us, uh, you know, it was a $20 billion gaming company. And then when he left, the, the ideas and the decisions that we made during dinner transformed that company to where it is one of the leading artificial intelligence uh, uh, provider, uh, CPU provider, or GPU provider in the world. And today he has a market cap. I haven't looked at it, you know, in the last few days, but well over a few hundred billion dollars. And and Jensen will will tell you that that transition from a gaming company to being the leading provider of artificial intelligence and to, and machine learning platform occurred because of the partnership that he had with Oak Ridge National Laboratory. And today, around Frontier, we are doing the same with AMD and Lisa Su, who is the CEO of AMD. And so what might be one of your biggest disappointments? That's certainly one to champion. Um, what might be one where you see, mm, we could have done more, or I wish this would have handled, been handled differently? Yeah, so I think, I think um, uh, one of the way I approach uh, that particular question is not just outline the disappointments, but also offer a solution, right? I mean, because ultimately we want to make sure that we are continuing to make pro progress. And so I, w I think it's a fair uh, uh, criticism to say that for a community that has had the leading science laboratory in the country and maybe in the world here for the last 75 years plus, we do not have the kind of innovation ecosystem, um, you know, technology and innovation jobs that we could have created. And that requires intentional focus, partnerships, community engagement, community buy-in. And so one of our new initiatives that we have been, again, working for some time is this uh, initiative, with, again, with TVA and the University of Tennessee. Both Randy Boyd and Jeff Lyers has been an integral partner in, in creating this Techstars Accelerator that we are very excited about, to be intentional about creating an innovation ecosystem, working to translate effectively innovations that comes out of our laboratory into new businesses and new jobs as opposed to just sitting on a shelf and writing a paper. So it has been, a, to me, it is a disappointment that we are not Research Triangle Park or Boston or, or Austin, if you will, uh, and, and I think we can do something about it, and, we, and that is something that we are being intentional about. We'll be back with more questions from Don and Susan in our third block here on Inside Tennessee with Dr. Zachariah.